Hello, super quick intro. Today I'm going to be showing you the simplest, easiest to follow solution for the Hanayama Infinity Puzzle. Which means I'm going to give you the quickest roadmap to turning those rings and getting them all separated out of that shell case. And then the reverse in how to put them all back together in the simplest way you possibly can. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we have a fully assembled Infinity Puzzle. I'm going to be holding the puzzle in this position the whole time so you should be able to see the infinity engraving and the Hanayama engraving in the ring that is on the right hand side. The other side is completely blank so there is only one way to get this uh, that you can hold the puzzle in this position. And for what I'm going to be calling things, these we're going to be turning them like dials so I'm going to call them dials. We'll call this one on the right the infinity dial and this one the blank dial for obvious reasons. Now, finding the routine that solves this puzzle is difficult, but actually following the routine is, is fairly straightforward as long as you grasp the principles of it. And the, essentially the main aim that, we're, that we need to achieve is turning this blank dial anti-clockwise all the way around so that the cutout part that is currently here is essentially here because that is the position at which we can separate this blank dial now unfortunately we can't or we have to do a lot of twisting with both dials to get this blank dial all the way around to here so first of all if you just let it hang the blank dial is going to drop down into this position we want to lift it slightly and then do an anti-clockwise turn into this position. Now we can't go any further, so as soon as we go as far as we can with that turn, we're then gonna focus on the infinity dial, and we're gonna turn this as well. Now, I'm gonna describe the turns this way around. If any of the turns don't work for you, then you just have to play around with the dial that you're not turning in terms of height, and you should be able to get the turn that you're looking for, or the one that I'm showing you. So for instance, if I just try and turn the infinity dial on its own, I can't. I have to lift the blank dial and then turn the infinity dial. Now, the infinity dial, we're gonna now turn around all the way around to this position here. And it takes five twists to do it. We've already done one, and we've done the first twist with the infinity dial in a down position. So height-wise, it was down. The second twist happens when it's up, so we lift it and then twist. The third twist happens when it's down again in that position there. The fourth happens when it's up, but again, it won't twist at the minute when it's up. So we have to play around with the blank dial to be able to do that twist. And the final twist is when it's in a down position as well in here. So the twists in total go down, up, down, up, down. It's nice and simple or easy to remember routine. Once we've turned that infinity dial all the way around to this position, we can now turn the blank dial another notch along. Now, we can't do it just as it is. We have to lift the dials into various positions. And essentially, there's only a, a small amount of positions that it can be. So for, for that twist, it is in that position there. Uh, rather than describe each twist, it's just going to be a trial and error or a very easy trial and error process for you to find. Now once we've turned it on the second notch for the blank dial, we're now going to reset the infinity dial back to where it was. And we're going to follow that same routine of down, up, but again we just have to play around with the height of the blank dial. Down again, up again. And the final one is down when you play around with the height of the blank dial. Now once the infinity dial is back in its original position, we should be able to turn on one more notch for this blank dial. And then, you may have guessed it already, we're now going to come all the way back around with the infinity dial following that same routine. Down, up, down, up, down. And then, again, playing around with the heights, we're going to be able to turn when we find the right height. 
onto almost the last notch. So there it is. And again, you may have guessed it, we're now gonna reset the infinity dial by following that same formation or that same routine. Down, up, down, up, down. And then we can do the final twist that you can, that now reveals the part in the shell piece that allows that blank dial to separate from there. And now it's a simple case of repeating that routine that we've done what seems like so many times. Down, up, down, up, down. And we can then take out the infinity dial from there. And reassembling the infinity puzzle is essentially the long-winded reversal of all those moves. So first of all, we're going to place the infinity dial in. We're going to line it up with what you can now see in the shell pieces, which is where those pieces come apart. So we place the infinity puzzle uh, dial in, and then we do the, the usual twists. Down, up, down, up, down. So it's back in its original position. And then we can place the blank dial in, turn it clockwise one turn or as far as it will go. And then we're playing around with this infinity dial again. We're coming all the way around, anti-clockwise, down, up, down, up, down. And then we can twist on the blank dial, play around with the heights for where it is. We turn it clockwise again and should fall back down into position. We come back with the infinity dial, down, up, down, up, and down. We turn the blank dial, lift it slightly in position, I'll play around with the positions, there it is, we turn it clockwise again we come back round with the infinity dial down up down up down the usual routine and we go clockwise once more again play around with the heights and then we've just got to bring it back down once more and we've fully reassembled the infinity puzzle same routine, down, up, down, up, down. And then this final move, we lift slightly, we push it back into alignment, and we have fully reassembled the infinity puzzle. So there it is, that is how you disassemble and then reassemble the infinity puzzle. As long as soon as you get the concept right, you're trying to move the blank dial all the way around anti-clockwise to its last position and how you do that is by going backwards and forwards with that infinity dial. As soon as you understand that concept, it's relatively simple to get there, it's just a case of playing around with the heights for the certain positions that don't quite work in the down, up, down, up, down um, routine to turn the infinity down. It all sounds much more complicated than it is. So yeah, as soon as you grasp what the aim is, it's relatively straightforward to do. The only challenging parts are the instances where you have to play around with the height of the blank dial, so I'm just pushing it up slightly before you can twist the infinity in the infinity dial in certain positions. And then the same thing when you turn in the blank dial, you have to play around with the height of the infinity dial when trying to get a few of those anti-clockwise moves when you're trying to separate them and the clockwise moves when you're trying to put them back together. Again, which sounds more complicated than it actually is in practice. Now hopefully this has helped you solve the infinity puzzle for yourself. If there's a move that you're stuck with or you don't quite understand, please feel free to comment below and I will help you as much as I possibly can. 
And thank you very much for being here. If you want to see me struggle through the infinity puzzle for the first time, or you want to see me solving all the step-by-step -step solutions to any of these other handy hour puzzles, then be sure to click my face here to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace!